Coming up is another fine product from Word in Your Ear. If you'd like to help, go to patreon.com slash word in your ear. For now, on with the show. Word down your way, out of the attic and into your hood. Welcome to another edition of Word Down Your Way. Musicians about to go on tour and uh, looking back at some of the first and the best uh, shows they've ever seen and played. And uh, Teenage Fan Club are about to uh, go back on the road in October and November. And thus, yeah. welcome Norman Blake. Hello. Norman, lovely Hello. to see you. Yeah, nice uh, to see you too. I, I think anybody watching this will just think this is clearly the, the Gilet brothers. <laughs> yeah, we're all, I know. Or we some idea just how cold it is in Glasgow where you are and in London where well, we are. Yeah, exactly. Do you know, it's not too bad here, I don't think. But I guess it's going to get cold in the next couple of days, isn't it? So it, it is. is particularly over there, there, isn't it? We're yeah. all set. We're, we're prepared and ready to go. Absolutely for you, absolutely. Well, look, you know what we tend to do here is just talk about you're going out on tour in 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 uh, October, November. We'll talk about that in a yeah. minute. But can you remember the first shows that you saw? Or where would that have been? It was Glasgow, probably, because you were born in Glasgow, weren't yeah, you? Yeah. Well, actually, just outside Glasgow and Coatbridge, and the first band that I can, I, well, I, you know, I've got a, a band that I saw in the late '60s when I was a baby, which I'll maybe save for a moment or two. But the first band that I, I chose to go and see was the Wombles. Um, oh my god, amazing. I think 1976 or thereabouts, maybe a bit earlier, 75. Classic era. Yeah, I, I believe. Did they do all the, the minuet to Allegretta, yeah, wobbly yeah. white tan tails? And I'm thinking Mike, Mike Bart was there and possibly Chris Spedding as well. Yes, uh, possibly. Potentially, you know, well, you so, probably couldn't tell he was inside an enormous furry exactly, suit. Exactly, exactly. I'd like to think that, that he was inside one of the suits. But the, the band, the, uh, the first gig that I went to, and I can't remember this, but it's really, really cool. Um, my parents were on holiday in Blackpool in 1967, and they went to see Tom Jones, but the opening band were the Kinks in 1967. So I, the saw, Kinks. The Kinks, I saw the Kinks in 67. In Blackpool? Yeah. That's amazing. And I can't how, remember. how old were you been? So I was uh, approaching two. So right. I can't remember <laughs> much, anything at all about it, but I was looking at that period. And so I guess it's maybe around about the Village Dream Preservation Society. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. what a Some, fantastic thing to do. So I, I I'd, like to think that, I'd like to think that we were playing lots of the songs from that album. Because um, that, that was the time when they couldn't tour the States, could they? Because they, they'd been banned. And so true. they ended up literally at the end of the pier. Yeah, they? that's right. <laughs> And that's exactly where I saw them, yeah. Tom Jones and the Kinks, but the Kinks weren't first, so. Oh, well, there you incredible. Go. So how old were you when you went to see the Wombles? So the Wombles, I would have been, uh, let me think, 11 or 12. Oh, right. Like okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, towards the mature end of the audience. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Yes. Yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> if I'm mean, old and out of place. <laughs> yeah, I don't, definitely, yeah. But, you know, re those records, I, mean, I still love those records, you know. I still like, you know, I think they sound great. <laughs> you know, so, uh, yeah. yeah I've, 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 in fact, I've gone back and uh, I'm a bit of a record collector um, myself and I have picked up the the Wombles albums, you know, on Discogs. You get them for about pound fifty on Discogs. Uh, so Can you? I thought they would have shot up in value. No, they're quite, yeah, they're He's quite kind easy. of hip again, isn't he? Well, it is, but they're quite an easy band to collect, you know, if you're, um, you know, in terms of cost. Right. So, yeah, yeah. So anyway, that was the first one. I, and I, I remember, I'm thinking it was a great show. I'm having a great time. It was, a, I think it was a Saturday afternoon at, you know, like Coatbridge YMCA, something <laughs> like that. <laughs> That's brilliant. brilliant. So when, when did you... When did you put away childish things, if we can put it that sure. way? Well, I quickly, <laughs> quickly moved on to The Clash, and I saw The Clash a lot of times. So, so then, the Wombles, then The Clash. So, so, the, so there's an interesting change. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, just like I sort of going to, you know, the, the high school or whatever, and then the, the punk rock was sort of happening when I was a 13-year-old, um, so I could really get into all the, the punk rock stuff. So, and I, I did see a lot. I saw some of the great Clash tours, so London, they won the London Calling Tour, uh, Sandinista, I think I uh, give them enough rope as well, just to the tail end of that, maybe. So, uh, so I saw them a few times, and I said, "Got to so be Joe they, Strump." Sorry, was yeah. it, sorry, was it quite hair raising going to see them in those days? Because you, you know, you, gigs before security and well, <laughs> all the yeah, things that people get used to nowadays. What was yeah, it like? It was really great. Um, the, the shows, the two of the class shows were at the Glasgow Apollo, the famous Apollo, um, and so you know that was a seated theatre. Um, and I, 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 I remembered for the, having the bouncing balcony, right? Um, oh, which, yeah. which I, I did experience. Um, and so it was really amazing, actually. I mean, I loved them and I still love the clash. I did get to meet Joe Strummer in LA, 
you know, like when we went over first uh, for the first time with Teenage Fan Club, and, and I mentioned it to him that I saw them, and then you know, and I think he was, you know, he was very nice and respectful, and we had a good old chat. Yeah, about yeah. Him. So, but but they were great shows. They were an amazing live band. They were brilliant. What was the first time you were? So what on about the, stage? the Glaswegian bands? Oh yeah, well, I, I, you know, so Orange Juice were the band for me. That was the, the, the they were the band that, um, that made me want to start a band, you know. Um, and I guess the fact that they were doing the postcard thing in Glasgow, and it was really kind of DIY, yeah. um, was really encouraged me. Um, so I saw them quite a quite a number of times in the you know in the when they put out the first postcard singles. Um, and that was quite exciting, you know, the whole postcard thing, as the camera and them. Um, so I saw quite a lot of that stuff. But the first show that we we would have played uh, as Teenage Fan Club, uh, actually, it was in London. It was at Yulu. Um, All right. Uh, we had a friend who was, we, we'd made an album. Uh, and we, so we hadn't made, played any shows. And our friend Dave Barker was putting the album out on his paper house label. And so he put together, well, I don't think he put the show together, but we, we were certainly on the bill I think it was the Pastels, uh, Pale Saints and Ride. And then we that was our first UK show. But our first um, US show was an amazing one because we kind of very shortly thereafter um, flew into New York and played at CBGB's. That was our first show in the in the US. We got to play there a couple of times. So it was, you know, that sort of legendary venue. It was just great to have been able to play there. Did you have that experience that so many British bands have are going to America? The first night is somewhere really cool, like CBGB's or whatever the other New York places were. Yeah. And invariably when they look out, there's Debbie Harry's in the front row or whatever. Yeah. And, and then the following night, they're in Moose Droppings, Ohio. It, it was, And yeah. nobody's heard of them. Absolutely. You, you think it's going to all be like this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely that, that. That was the experience. We met, actually, that was, we met Yola Tenko that night. We're still friends with them, but we met them that, that night. So that's 1989. Right. Uh, what was that show? But yeah, it was that we played the show in New York. We, someone gave us a car. I remember the car had a hole in the, you know, in the, if you sat in the passenger seat, there was a kind of hole so you could see the, the road uh, beneath the car, but somebody had arranged some gigs, uh, you know, one in Philadelphia, and uh, yeah, they were just in like you know like, tiny little bars in the corners, in the window of a bar or whatever. So it was wasn't quite the CBGB's experience, but I mean that was an experience in itself. CBGB's yeah. that was a crazy. Did you have a period when you were busking as well? Did you? Yeah, did you... I did a, yeah. I, I guess it's I, yeah. I used to busk with my friend Douglas Stewart from BMX Bandits. And Sean Dixon, who was in Soup Dragons, and, and we used to go into Glasgow and, and busk. And what did uh, you play? What kind of stuff? Uh, we played things like, uh, I remember we did we'd Psycho Killer, a couple of Jonathan Richmond songs, that kind of thing. A couple of Buddy Holly things. So were, you a, Psycho were you a killer? Stick? Were yeah, you a killer? Yeah. We you see, I want to know what you think about this because Mark and I have been talking yeah. about this recently. Is it, I think buskers nowadays have too much equipment. Mm-hmm. It's you too do. loud. You can hear it too far away. You For shouldn't sure. be able to do that, should you? No, they're sort of feeling their little trolley behind them with the, <laughs> the amplifiers and all the stuff on it. Yeah, you just don't want to get shot. Yes, they, they'll have more equipment, I guarantee. They will have more equipment nowadays than Teenage Fan Club would have had when you had put your first album Oh, out. Oh, no, no. I think we had Raymond, I think, had a couple of guitars, and that was it. I didn't have a guitar. So he lent me his guitar so that we could have, t- you know, two guitars playing on the on the records. It was like that. You know, we really didn't have, have much money. And uh, um, I mean, I think to, to pay for the recording of our first album, Raymond had inherited uh, from his neighbour uh, a, a washing machine and a fridge or something, which he sold and bought us some studio time. Uh, and and that's, <laughs> that paid for the most of the... Well, we were, obviously, we were only in for a couple Nobody's of years. Nobody's doing that anymore. No, right? you, you Nobody's know, doing that. Well, anymore. you're not getting much money for a, a fridge and a washing machine, you know. No, but they get all recorded at home nowadays, can't well, they? That's, they can, yeah, they can. <laughs> Definitely, it, yeah. It's yeah. moved on. So what's the plans for the tour? Well, actually, we're, we're doing a tour of theatres. Uh, we played a couple on last tour and we really enjoyed it. And... So I guess part of the idea is to play in places that we haven't played before. You know, to, you know what you tend to do is play in the same venues every time you go to a, a town, you know, um, Manchester Academy 2 or whatever. And so I think we just thought, well, let's try and do something a bit different. And the theatre experience was something that we enjoyed. And so we've, we've, that, that's the kind of idea for the tour. So it's a seated audience. It's Se- a, seated, yeah. yeah, yeah. A bit concert-like rather yeah, than... Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yes, right. yeah, yeah. yeah. Does, that, that was, change, does that change the energy? You know, because... 
Because we always hear the bands prefer people to be standing up. Do you go through stages where you prefer them standing up and stages where you prefer them sitting down? I mean, I, personally speaking, I quite like going to theatre shows. I like to be able to sit down when I see music. You know, you know. That's age. I, well, that's that, just getting older. That, for sure. But we have you wouldn't have thought that when you saw The Clash when you were No, 14. no, definitely. Having said that, though, the Apollo was seated, you know, so, I mean, the people did stand up, of course. All oh, right, but right. I suppose it is the thing. I mean, the, the people that come to see us are getting on a bit too, so I think a lot of them... Are going to appreciate having a seat, you know. So have little, you have you gone through that. that stage? Have you gone through that stage? We often hear about this. The bands, you know, they have young audiences, and then the audience kind of grows up a bit, and they are engaged in raising children or whatever, and they don't go out. And yeah. then twenty years later, they go out they again. Suddenly come back. Is you, that definitely? That's definitely a thing. But also, you also meet the kids, you know. Yeah, you know, you'll meet young people and say, "Well, oh, I really like your music," and I heard it because my folks had the album, you know, and they used to play it, and so oh, they'll get some kind of nostalgic connection to it or something like that, right. you know. Right. Uh, so that's all, but that happens quite a lot these days, you know. Um, so that's it's always always good to hear, you know. So does the set list kind of write itself, or you know, for this tour, or? Yeah, I think we always try to. I mean, I think we we always see ourselves as a contemporary band, and in, in the sense that we've never broken up, we've always been around. And we always like the idea of playing new music when we play live. I mean, we'll, we'll intersperse the set with songs from all of the albums. We, we definitely do that. But we always like to play, you know, maybe a, a fifth of the set will be new songs. We just think, think it's important to do that if we go to the, the hassle of recording them, you know, writing and recording these songs. We <laughs> well, well, if you don't, you, you're them. going to, you know, if you don't, you, you're, you're ostensibly a kind of greatest hits act, aren't you? Well, exactly. You, is, know, I, you know, and I love, I love, so you, does it. you know, you go see Paul McCartney, he does it too. He's like, well, I know, oh, yeah. he does. I know you don't want to hear these, but I'm going to do them anyway. And I can totally yeah. understand why he wants to do them because those will be, you know, will mean a lot yeah. to him. Do you, do you, do make sure do he doesn't you, play two new ones in a row because people see, I was going to say, do you, calls. Do you yeah. sprinkle them, or do you sprinkle them throughout, or do you put them in a in a I, section? No, I, I think we'll sprinkle them throughout, you know, and you can always tell people, look, we are going to do a new one, and if you do want to go to the bathroom and get there, <laughs> you won't be offended. That's, <laughs> that's okay. I'm going to go get a cheeseburger. Yeah, you've paid your money, you know, so that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you know that they'll be back for the hits kind yeah, of thing. For that's, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. So you're quite relaxed about it. Oh, that's, that's interesting. I, I've kind of gotten to the stage now where I'm telling people, look, we're doing this thing where um, we're going to pretend that the show's over and we're going to go off stage, but we are actually going to come back on. We're going to play three more songs. So just, we, I just like to keep people, you know, up to date with what's happening. Um, yeah. But it is funny how everyone does. You go through that pretense of, you know, well, this is the end. Thanks for coming. Good night. That's right. We have absolutely no intention of doing that, you know. John and, uh, Martin. John Martin was the first person I ever saw do this. I'm not going off the stage and coming back. Just yeah. Yes, you want some more? Clap. I will Wait, stay. I'm, I'm absolutely. Gonna, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna, yeah. Funnily, John Martin. When I was a, a youngster, I, I, the very first job that I had, I worked in the Cormac's Music Shop in Glasgow. Um, it was around the corner from the Apollo, actually, and a kind of very famous old music shop. And one of the first uh, uh, musicians that I met in there and served as a customer was John Martin. And he came walking in and I knew who he was. And I was like, wow, John Martin. And one of the guys in the shop nudged me and he said, he doesn't pay for anything. I was like, okay. So he came over and he said, hey, how are you doing, wee man? Can have a couple of sets of strings. And I was like, there you go, John. And he went to get you know his money and he said, no, no, you're good. And he was like, oh, cool, wee man. And so there you go. <laughs> I, I gave John Martin some guitar strings. That's so, lovely. Um, uh, well, so, yeah. I'm sure I remember a story about you with with the specials where they were, Terry Hall was incredibly sweet. Yeah, Terry, Tell us what happened there. Well, do you know, so that was again at the specials were playing at Glasgow Apollo and I was friends with this guy, John Martin, the Jukes, who used to play tambourine and primal scream. Yeah. Anyway, he said, look, I know where the specials are staying. You know, I think we can maybe go and buy some tickets. So we went round to the hotel and sure enough, there in the foyer was Terry Hall. So we went over and we got chatting with him and said, look, we, we hope to come to the gig. And he said, oh, he's just, you know, just hang out with me. And so he got us a drink and we were sitting in the bar and we were, you know, we're kids. Um, and then the he said, OK, here, here's a sketch. Just come up with us to the venue in the bus. So I was handing like Rico Rodriguez, Rodriguez's trombone so we could go on the bus. When we get to the venue, just walk in with that. Right. You know, you're like a kind of roadie for the, for the you know, the, the, the day. And we got into the venue and we got backstage and hung out with him. And it was really brilliant. Right. And many many years later, I was in London, and I had uh, I had uh, Edwin Collins' son Will uh, and Terry's son uh, Theo in the back of the van. I was kind of driving the van, and I said to Theo, "Listen, say your dad thanks for you know uh, I never forgot forgot that." And I ended up hooking up with Terry online, and we had a good old chat about it. 
Um, and so it was just really nice to be able to tell them personally. That's such yeah, a sweet a story. Isn't it? Yeah, it was yeah, really, uh, really amazing. You know, it's, yeah, it's it lovely. Very good. Good. So, do we traditionally finish these conversations by asking people what's the best live show you ever saw? Okay, well, I think possibly um, I got to see the Smiths really early on. Um, they were they played at the QM in Glasgow. I think around about the time this charming man came out, just before. Uh, it was when they had all the flowers across the front of the stage. Uh, uh, and the QM, you know, could maybe hold 400 people, something like that. It was fairly, it's a fairly small room and they were incredible. I've never forgotten that show. It was absolutely brilliant. You know, it was mesmerising. Right. Uh, so I would, have, I would have to say that was one of them. I did get to see McCartney on my 50th birthday, which was absolutely brilliant too. I mean, I, you know, Paul McCartney, right? And it was that was an incredible show too. Right, uh, that right. was in Toronto a few years back. Neil Young, uh, uh, by, by Booker T and the MGs. Oh, now, well, that, God, uh, that that was pretty good. I found myself, because um, we played with them that night in, in Glasgow. And yeah. I found myself, I went for a pee, and I found myself standing next to Steve Cropper, oh, having, a, having a pee. And I kind of thought, <laughs> what, what do you say? And I just kind of turned around and said, that was an amazing show, Steve. And he was like, hey, thank you very much. So there you go. Um, but I, I thought I have to say something. I can't, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. If you have a P next to Steve Cropper, you've got to, you've got to mark the occasion. Well, you, Absolutely. You do, you do yeah, yeah, for sure. Because he uh, is surely the greatest guitarist. Uh, he, he's, oh, he's, he is. Yeah, <laughs> he's, we, yeah we, we were big fans, you know, and, and, and uh, of Neil Young also. But, yeah, we always like Steve Cropper's guitar playing. Raymond is a big, big Steve Cropper fan. Right. Uh, right. Big influence. So, yeah, and also great. Booker T and the MGs, the original – the yeah. greatest band ever. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah, love them. Yeah, it's yeah, <laughs> incredible. We can agree on that. We're all just going to sit here nodding at each other, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> Quite rightly. Uh, it, can't yeah. be, it can't be said too often. Booker no. T and the MG is uh, the greatest band. For sure, yeah. Well, look, it's been lovely to talk to you. Likewise, and, uh, nice to see you both. Uh, and uh, and yeah, your delivery hasn't turned up, so we've uh, managed not, to get through. <laughs> not, nothing, yeah. I've got to, I've got to have to carry 10 sheets of uh, plasterboard up two flights of stairs, so... Oh, right. Wish, wish me luck. <laughs> oh, yeah. Enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, yeah fine. for sure. And as we... Tra- the traditional sign-off, of course, is good luck with the tour. Thank you very much. Break a string. That's right, oh, yeah. for sure, yeah. <laughs>